wins in nine playoff games. While the Georgetown Raiders may have struggled to find consistency at times during the 2013-14 regular season, the playoffs have been a whole different story thus far. Uh, we finished the season off with, with five straight wins and, uh, um, and now uh, eight of nine games. So uh, the boys are playing great hockey. They've, they've all bought in. Um, they're blocking shots. They're committed to one another and, and committed to the structure of our team. And uh, um, it's, it's been great. I think a lot of the boys have really just bought into the system and really like started listening to the coach and realizing that he's, he's a pretty smart guy. And when we listen to him and all buy in, you know, we can do a lot. The Raiders serve notice they'd be a force to be reckoned with come the postseason. Wins over Toronto Lakeshore, Aurora, Kingston and Coburg down the stretch was evidence of a group that were peaking at just the right time. I think that's honestly huge. Um, I mean, it's been proven with teams like the LA Kings, I think it was two years ago or so, they, they finished off in eighth place, but they were playing great at the end of the season, ended up winning the whole Stanley Cup from eighth place. So. Peaking at the right time, I think, is obviously huge. And we brought in uh, real character kids, uh, Jordan Brown and, and Mueller. Uh, McNiven's been outstanding in, in that, and, and also Michael Singh uh, played extremely well down the stretch when given his opportunity. So, and, and obviously, uh, you win and lose with your best players, and our best players have been the best players. Anthony Marr coming back from injury took his game to another level. Um, we got guys like Ryan Smith, who's uh, by far our most improved player and, and has bought in. Uh, Leah Borg, Phil Kiss, Liam Clare, all these veteran guys, and, and, and they love each other. And it's a great, great dressing room, and we have a lot of fun, and we, we're working extremely hard. In the first round, Georgetown faced their Halton region rivals, the Milton Ice Sox, a squad that had beaten them three out of four times during the regular season. The Raiders rushed aside Milton in four straight, however, including a convincing 7-2 drubbing in game four. Uh, we knew they were going to take penalties. We knew that they have a little bit of trouble with uh, discipline. So we, you know, we knew they were going to, you know, try to get us to, to play their game. But we uh, we stuck to ours and let them took the penalties, and, and we capitalized on, on power play. So round two saw the Raiders facing the second seeded Buffalo Junior Sabers. The Georgetown jumped out to a 2-1 series lead, and then in game four came the comeback down 4-1 midway through the second. The Raiders high-powered offense notched five straight tallies to take the game 6-4. It was a moment that brought the team together and gave them an even greater sense of confidence as they went on to win the series in five games. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was pretty pretty uh, devastating when we went down 4-1 there, but, you know, our attitude was we knew that we weren't out of the game. We knew we could, we could come back there, so um, we got a shorthanded goal at the end of the second there to sort of get a little boost going into the third and from a momentum standpoint that was huge. We got down and uh, I, I called the timeout and, uh, to get our boys set up and, and uh, interesting enough Steve Haladin took over the, the timeout. You know, he stood up on the bench and, and said boys get back to our structure, uh, we can come back and win this game and, and they bought in right from that timeout. It's huge, it's a huge character win, it really proves to us that even if we're facing some hardship, uh, hard times with refs or penalties or anything like that, that we can fight back and get through anything. I know it really gives us the feeling that, you know, we can actually win. Up next for the Raiders, they take on the number one seed in the Southwest Conference, the Toronto Lakeshore Patriots, a squad who will no doubt have payback on its mind. The last season, the Raiders knocked off the Patriots in the conference quarterfinals in six games. This year's Toronto team is much improved, however, as they led the Southwest with 76 points. Coach Walters and his squad know they'll have their hands full. Well, the, the biggest thing with them is is their speed. Uh, they're they're very very quick. Uh, again, they've bought into to Jason uh, Forge, their head coach's uh, structure. They're they're very disciplined team. They don't take a lot of penalties, and they got great goaltending. And and, and their special teams are, are very very good. So we're going to have to stay disciplined. We're going to have to make sure that uh, our power play keeps going here. Um, we're going to have to shut down their speed and, uh, and just play a real structured game. We, we've gone through their game tape and our guys know what to expect and, and we're going to counterbalance that with our structure and, uh, and just keep playing the way they are. It's been a true team effort for the Raiders so far from both veterans and rookies.
The captain, Steve Aladdin, has been on fire in the postseason with 19 points in just nine games. Like nothing, nothing but good stuff to say about him. He's doing amazing. He's, he's scoring timely goals. He's doing exactly his role, but he's playing defensively as well. He's all, like he's an all-around player that we can use for the penalty kill, for everything. The guy's really stepped up the play. He's doing amazing. He's a great leader on the team. In the dressing room, in the, in the practices, he knows all the drills, gets the guys going. Awesome player, awesome addition. He's really, really a big help this year for sure. On the other end of the spectrum is rookie Adam Maskerin. The 15-year-old AP is projected as a top five pick in this year's OHL draft, but has played like a seasoned veteran for the team. Uh, it's unbelievable, I mean, that he's 15 years old. I think he's a man-child. Um, I've never seen a shot like his before. Um, he has that sort of natural scorer type player to our lineup, um, and he helps out a lot on the power play, so I think he's been a huge addition in that, that stand. The last time the Raiders made the OJHL semifinal was in 2012 when they lost a heartbreaking Game 7 in overtime to eventual league champion Stouffville. And one thing is for certain, if this series can match the skill and excitement of that one, fans of both teams are in for a real treat. For Raiders TV, I'm Alex Paschevansky.